Hi, Pat the Podcast Editor here. How do you prove to your customers that you're the right one for the job? Well, in today's episode, Dan and Lloyd talk about the importance of showing the good work you do, and they briefly mention their recent TV ad. We're also mentioning this TV ad on our podcast right now. Oh shit, it's happening. Like, this is a piece of content that we're making from doing that. Well, I say briefly. And we're not going to be those annoying people. We did a TV ad. <laughs> but you know, if well, it comes up in comments, it sounds like we are at the moment. <laughs> no, but don't worry. There's a reason for everything. Or so they say. There's a there's strategy but behind the madness. There's strategy behind why we're talking about this on our podcast because we're practicing what we preach. So why is showing so much more important than telling? Stay tuned to find out. Right. Let's get the show on the road. This is episode 70 of the Business Anchors Podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors Podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. What is the number one most effective marketing strategy you can use to drive sales today? Well... Oh, hang on. <laughs> that already sounds like you're doubting yourself. No, when I was preparing for this episode, you know, like strategically, we should be dangling the carrot and then giving the the big shebang at the end so people keep listening. Right, yeah. I, I was kind of thinking, oh, should we do that? Because strategically for us, that'd be better if we had more listeners. It'll just waffle on for half an hour and then at the end go, this is yeah. it. Yeah, but then I realised, let's not do that. Okay. So, um... I think it, it'll be better for listeners if we just give them the answer to that question. Yeah. But there is a reason to stick around because... We're trusting you, listeners, <laughs> yeah. that if we tell you this early on, <laughs> you're going to continue to listen to the episode. Because there's a lot more to it. And I'm going to unpack a real-world example of how we've done this recently. Okay, great. With something we've done. And it's going to be... Yeah, there's going to be a lot more examples. So, in short, um, the answer to your question is to create content that provides evidence that you deliver on your promises. And that's really kind of underwhelming. (laughs) No, (laughs) no. But um, if you think about how, um, how the buying process works, you know, if someone's buying a new lawnmower or looking for a new accountant or looking for new mics for their podcast set, there's a, there's a process they go through to research and understand what is the best solution to my problem? With all the options out there, and you listeners who are listening, you are part of probably part of a business, or you own a business, or you're a marketer for a business that solves a problem. So you need to understand what that process is and understand what you need to do to make sure you position yourself as the best solution. And again, looking back at historically what's worked for us and our clients, the content that demonstrates that you deliver on your promises demonstrates that your mic is the best on the market for podcasts or demonstrate that you're the best accountants for small businesses that content that shows that rather than just tells it always helps um convert the most amount of people and even from our perspective when i'm i'm doing sales calls and stuff people always comment on the things they've seen like oh i saw that you generated these results i saw that you produced that creative that was really good and they mention those things i think something really key that you just said is about showing that you showing the results rather than telling and i think that is the key that 90 percent of businesses miss so 90 percent of 90 percent of businesses say we do this really good thing you know however that's done you know in an instagram post we do great aircon installations or it could be a big blog saying this type of aircon thing is really good but um very few businesses actually go you know we said we do really good Mm. aircon solutions here's this evidence of how we've helped someone get the best aircon solution for this uh particular weird room and the annoying thing is most people listening have 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 that evidence already Mm. They, they they are doing good stuff they are, you know, providing good service for customers or producing good products for customers, but they're just not doing the the less difficult part of capturing that in content mm. and distributing it to the right people at the right time to convince them to buy your product. If you think, if you're doing great work, you've put the majority of the effort in and you've made that one customer happy, um, there's just the next step is sharing with the world the great stuff you've done with that customer and that could p- reach 
thousands of people and get you loads of new customers but you've only done a little bit extra at the end from what you're already doing yeah. for that one customer yeah so i think i guess as for listeners if you're listening to this and you aren't currently producing content that provides evidence that you deliver on your promises this episode is vital for you because i can't kind of emphasize enough how much this will change the game when it comes to the effectiveness of your marketing i'm not just saying it for a good podcast episode literally we've seen this ourselves when we started to change our messaging to communicate the trackable roi we generate for clients when still to this day whenever we speak about like recently i'll give you an example recently we um uh, hit a milestone of tracking over 1.2 million pounds of revenue for one of our e-commerce clients and the second we posted about that and also shared some screenshots of comments of people saying oh i love this mm. ad and stuff instant leads in my linkedin inbox mm. and instant um sales calls and new business booked in it, it just works we've done all the hard work we just yeah. had to say to the world we did this really good stuff yeah. look at it and i think some people again i've spoken to quite a few business about this. some people feel like that's boasting like some people feel like it's like oh look at me i'm bloody brilliant which i, I understand to an extent but it's not it's presenting the facts it's presenting mm the evidence that you deliver on your promises. So I think people need to get over that thing of, oh, I don't wanna look mm. like I'm gloating. You're not. And before we scare people off when you say about if you're not producing content, mm. just, just to let you know. So producing content can be what we do with fancy cameras and fancy people. <laughs> <laughs> or producing content can be taking a picture and put it on, putting it on Instagram yeah. at a basic level. So I think whether you're listening and you're a, one, be a one man band that services uh, printers and photocopiers or if you're a marketer mm. for a big brand i think it's it's relevant at different ends of the spectrum yeah. so don't be scared about producing content that's a really good point i think yeah and I, i've seen very small businesses that do this themselves very well yeah like before and after video so for example um I follow a, a, a carpet cleaning company that obviously don't have a huge budget to invest in agencies like us helping them. They do it all on their mobile phone and they show videos of them doing a before and after. And it just it works so well because you're like, oh, my carpets look like that before. Yeah. I want them to look like the after. I'll hire you. I've seen very similar with a local roof cleaning company and a local landscape gardener. Basically, they just post before and afters in different ways. So either a photo we can swipe to see the after or a video to show what they've done. Done on a phone, very simply, not professional, but it makes you, when you've seen a couple of them, you're like, oh, wow, these guys yeah. seem really good. And that's an example of this concept in its most simplistic form. There's a whole load of other ways that you can demonstrate you deliver on your promises that we're going to unpack in this episode. But that, that I guess that's a really good example of its most simplistic form, a before and after but obviously that doesn't work for all types of businesses. Like accountants showing a visual of a before and after. I don't know, would they show like sad people than happy people? <laughs> that might not work. But why, why do you think more people don't do this then if it's so effective? Um, I think a couple of reasons. I do think the whole thing of like people don't want to look like they're gloating or boasting. I think there is a right. weird like co thing around that. Um, also, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Very honest. What, what other reasons no, do you I, think? I haven't thought about do it Do you much. know what? I do think it's weird because it's such a simple thing that people don't do. Mm. And I think possibly because people think it's more complicated. One of those things where it can't be that easy. Because mm. oh, surely I can't just post photos on Instagram and it's going to grow my business just showing yeah. a, a, yeah. a boiler that I've installed. Mm. But the reality is it does. And I think also sometimes people that haven't grown up with social media and maybe don't use it as mm. much or don't understand the effect it has mm. so I, i'd say maybe decision makers that are above sort of 35 maybe i'm trying to work out mm. when that w might be um that that have only used social media and stuff in their more adult life yeah not thinking there we go well surely mm. i'm not going to post some tiling and someone's going to book me just because they've seen a photo on Instagram. It's not just posting the tiling. It's not just posting the before and after. And this is where it gets more, mm. not more complex, but um, like other ways you can do this. So it's the process that leads up to the tiling. What's the process you go through with a client to understand their needs and present relevant solutions? 
you know, what's your customer service look like when they've got a pro an issue? Do you have a team that answers them promptly and that kind of thing? It's showing all of this stuff that you deliver on your promises of mm. delivering excellent service, um, supporting your clients through the journey of finding their best tiles. I or think that's like, the thing. It's all of these things. There's, there's so many. There's people out there who are like, I want my kitchen tiled, but I don't know where to start. I don't know what tiles I want and yeah. I don't know how to do it. And if you present a thing saying, this is the process, mm. we come in, we've got this hmm. tablet and we show you all these different tiles. Yeah. We'll price it up there and then. And then that person's like, oh, yeah. wow, it's that easy. Okay. Yeah. And there's no commitment when we're there. We'll just give you a quote and we'll go away. Mm. And if you want, I think there's so many ways and so many parts of the process, like you're saying, not just here's the finished tiling. Yeah. And I think like a, a practical action pe listeners can take is to actually document your whole process your business process of working with a customer so it could be before you even engage with a customer you've done a load of research to understand what what the the latest materials are to produce the best tiles that's mm. like all the work you're doing before then when someone gets in touch with you you go and have a meeting with them and you ask lots of questions and you've got your lovely sales representative Stephen or mm. sandra who goes then you present the idea options. Then you come and do an initial fitting. Then mm. you do whatever these things are. Break down all of those steps because each of those are pieces of content you can create. Could be photos with some mm. copy to show what's going on. Could be uh, videos on your Instagram stories or TikTok videos to show yeah. that. And if even if you're not a service-based business, if you're a bigger business selling products, um, there's still plenty of, there's so much you could talk about. So you could just be creating content about how easy it is to, send something back for a refund if you don't like it you could be creating something to show how much care is taken into designing or making that product unboxings and reviews mm -hmm. that for our for e-commerce clients um that's one of our most effective pieces of content showing people that look like you real people you, real people using the product and um cleverly talking about the objections other people have so this is something we do when we're producing unboxings and reviews we create resources to ensure that the people who are unboxing it talk about the points we want to talk about without telling them what to say. So we ask them, like, if we know a common objection is people thinking, I'm not sure if that's actually got the battery life it's got, we will prompt the people to ask them, was the battery life what it said it was on the, on the packaging? And they'll yeah. go, we tried this, and I didn't know the battery life was mm. going to be that, but it is. And, you know, I think a lot of uh, marketers in, in companies think that that's going to be a complicated process and think, oh, well, well influencer marketing, oh, we we've, don't know if we have the budget for that. We've we've done things where we just genuinely use real people that don't have an online following, mm. just that look like uh, the people that are going to be buying. Mm. They're in the same demographic and they're completely genuine, real and raw, mm. just talking about the product and it, and it produces mm. a really good return. Can I um, unpack a real life example and show you how we've produced hundreds of pieces of content that are showing we deliver on our promises? Please unpack. <laughs> Permission to unpack. <laughs> Thank you. I'm quite excited to share this. So um, practicing what we preach, mm -hmm. we recently worked on and shot a really exciting TV ad um, that went incredibly well and our client is very, very happy with. Now, because we were doing this, producing this exciting TV ad, we wanted to produce content that shows we deliver on our promises of producing exciting content. Oh, so this is an example for actually. This is an business. example for us. Okay, right. And I want to talk. I want to break down how we've produced hundreds of pieces of content that show that from this one project. Break it down. And uh, that was weird. And um, hats off to our team, especially Tay from the team, who's done really good work with this. Um, so yeah. But also, I guess just to say, yes, we've got an amazing team now and you might be thinking, oh, I haven't got a team of 10 people, whatever. But we did this when it was just you and I in our parents' back room with a crappy camera. So yeah. this isn't just for people who have got loads of amazing team in, and And Dan, you can testify, you don't have to be intelligent to, to do this, do you? Because you, you <laughs> did it. Fuck off. <laughs> um, so, um, so I'm going to, first of all... Um, when we were working on the pre-production of this TV ad, we created content, behind the scenes content, teasing the work that was going into writing the script for this TV ad. So for example, one of the pieces of content we had was a printed script that on the front said top secret TV ad. We took a photo and posted it on across our socials and gave some context as to, oh, we're working on an exciting TV ad, just to tease the idea of 
um, and, and talking about the work that went into that pre-production stage. Now just talk about uh, perception of someone looking at that content. Go on. Oh, they're good enough to do a TV ad. Exactly. Oh, it's top secret. That's intriguing. I want to know more. Oh, this seems like they work on exciting stuff. Oh, mm. they are good and I want to buy from them. And hats off to Barney from the team. That was his idea for that post. So um, well done, Barney. But yeah, no, you're exactly right. There's a there's strategy be behind the madness. There's strategy behind why we're talking about this on our podcast because we're practicing what we preach. We're talking about this amazing TV ad now. This is so... Whilst adding value. This is so meta. <laughs> I know. So we had loads of BTS content, behind the scenes content before showing the work that was going into preparing for this. Um, we had we we were producing Insta stories on a daily basis, showing the weird uh, props that we were sourcing, like uh, don't know how many kilograms of peas we had to source to fill a bath full of peas. Um, loads of hot dogs we had to buy for this hot dog thing, um, but showing the behind the scenes of us sourcing those products and the work that went into it on Insta stories. Um, we also, on the day of production, on the th two day shoot, I can't remember how many days shoot it was. I think it was one day. Was it one day? Mm. Um, on the one day shoot, we had people creating behind the scenes stories on Instagram, showing what was going on, showing the production team doing a brilliant job of set deck and um, setting the scenes up and doing all the lighting and making it work incredibly well. We also, Lloyd, there's more. Tell me, tell me we more. We also had um, someone who was producing a behind the scenes vlog. Vlog? Kind of like vlog for yeah. our YouTube channel. And a longer form video A longer content. form video where, um, you know, we had, uh, we, we had owls in this video. So we had Barney, the producer with owls on him who was talking through what was going on, which was interesting and intriguing. Mm. Um, and we had Tay who was presenting to camera talking about all the hard work that was going in with lots of plants there. Lauren had lots of plants, mm. which was weird. And in that longer form content, you're, um, you're communicating lots of different things about our business and what we do and how it works. Because a lot of people may be considering working with you, but there's kind of barriers in their mind of, oh, I don't really understand how that works though. I don't know if they'll be able mm -hmm. to do what I need them to do. I don't know if they've worked on things as big as this. Mm -hmm. And obviously with that content, you're answering all those things. I think the vlog is kind of a next level thing that we've, really got better at recently where it's like a raw f it's kind of like a raw form because it's not all pristine like people are you know walking around it's not someone you know who's scripted presented to camera it's sort of someone walking around with a camera and recording what's going on and people off the off the cuff explaining so it kind of shows yeah. you the real raw thing that we know what we're doing basically yeah also with the copy that we are writing for all of these pieces of content it was cleverly written to one, communicate um, all the hard work that had gone into doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, things like um, we had dry ice uh, that was coming out of pumpkin's mouths. And it was a lot of work having to refill that and show all the work that was going in there. Um, dry ice is something weirdly interesting. Go on Lloyd, talk to me about dry well, ice. Dry ice. Uh, I don't know anything about dry ice, really. <laughs> but all I know is when it was there, I couldn't stop looking at it. <laughs> it's a bit like fire, I think. <laughs> you know when you just stare into a fire and you can't yeah. look away? What were you talking about? Not needing to be intelligent to... <laughs> <laughs> Shiny thing! What's Lloyd doing? Oh, he's over there staring at the dry ice still. <laughs> he's been there all day. Oh, dear. Anyway, sorry. Um, Please continue providing value <laughs> while I am absolutely useless and pointless in this podcast. No, you're doing a good job of... Saying random stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, so we had those be behind the scenes vlogs created. Um, we also, it's not live yet, but when it does go live, we're going to share the actual TV ad across our socials to show everyone, look, here's the finished product. That's the simple thing of just going, mm. this is the work we've done. Yep. Yeah. We also, uh, the, the, um, the person that was shooting the behind the scenes vlog also captured hundreds of high quality behind the scenes photos to show the team in action and the hard work that's going in and the cool things. We can use those over time on social media and mm -hmm. on our website if we wanted to. We're also going to, <coughs> stop coughing Lloyd. Sorry. We're also going to create a case study of this project where we're interviewing with, with the, uh, the client talking about the process and what they thought. Again, great social proof and credibility for us because they're really happy. Mm. They're going to be saying brilliant stuff about working with us. We're also producing a feature film which is directed <laughs> by Steven Spielberg about how this advert was made. 
anymore. That was made up, Lloyd. Oh, sorry. Uh, We're also writing a book <laughs> about how this ad was made that's going to be sold in Waterstones I'm across done, the right? country. Give me a break. We're also getting tattoos on our heads about this advert <laughs> so everyone can see it. Um, we're also mentioning this TV ad on our podcast right now. Oh, shit, it's happening. Like, this is a piece of content that we're making from doing that. Because there's someone listening going, I need a TV ad for mm. my business. We're going to be getting quotes soon from various companies. Yep. I'm going to speak to Knowlton because now yep. I know they can do that well. Um, this is brilliant. Also, this is another thing I thought you know that wasn't doing. on the list. In our pitches now, when we're presenting to clients how we can help them, I've got some of the BTS photos of this TV ad shoot just so I can mention it when I'm pitching to say, oh, that was from a TV ad we shot the other day. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird because actually we've we've worked on bigger productions than this TV ad. Yeah. But the perception of TV, for yeah. some reason, people really think mm. highly of it. Yeah. Um, um, also, uh, last week's episode was about um, a new marketing approach that people should be taking. And it was taken from a keynote session I did at an event. Um, and I am speaking about the TV ad at events. Oh, great. I remember that recording that episode, actually, because it, it wasn't today with me wearing a different T-shirt. It was another day we recorded <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> mm. Oh, God, it's difficult to do this podcast with you. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Continue. Um, uh, also, when now networking, mm. talking, we, we mentioned the TV ad. And we're not going to be those annoying people. We did a TV ad. <laughs> but, you know, if well, it comes up in comments. It sounds like we are at the moment. No, this is all across a period of months, by the yeah. way, that we're not like ramming it down people's throats. Other than now. Yeah, other than now. <laughs> <laughs> Only because it's. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to give up there. But th there's, yeah. there's more content than that. But that just goes I, to show. Yeah. I know I took the mickey, but that is a really good demonstration of how far you can go with it. Mm. And we only invest all that effort because we know that we've converted lots of bees, be, lots of bees, niece, <laughs> previously. Um, <laughs> don't know why I can speak then, but we've converted lots of bees, niece, from doing this yeah. um, in the past. And we know it's worth all this time yeah. and effort and resource mm. to do it. Great. So, sorry, Dan, I was just going to say this all is great. Are you able to kind of summarise the steps someone could take potentially to do this? I sure am. Oh, good. <laughs> good. I thought you were looking at me like, no. no. So, um, actionable steps you can take to actually take this on board. One, um, first of all, you can just steal all those ideas I just gave to you on how we do it. So yeah. there was like hundreds of pieces of content you can make from stealing those ideas. Um, secondly, write down on a piece of paper... Um, all of the promises you make to clients, first of all. Write down what those promises are. Do you say, we can deliver these kinds of re results? Or we um, have the best customer service? Or they, we deliver 95% of projects on time? Those things you're saying to people day to day, oh yeah, we're not like those guys because we do this mm. in a different way. Exactly. We do this better. Exactly. So write down what those things are. And if you've got a product that says it's, it cuts closer. It shaves closer than all the others. Write that down. Mm -hmm. That's actually an example from one of our clients. So write all those things down, first of all. Um, and then, once you've got those, then start to mind map ideas for how you can prove you deliver on those promises. Mm, not just how you can communicate it, how you can prove it. For example, like let's give an example here. Uh, a random example Let's say, um, I'm looking at Lloyd for inspiration. Let's say, Lloyd... Let's say you need to lose weight. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. All right, okay. Let's say, um, you've got a pen in your hand, Lloyd. Let's say that that pen, you promise that that pen, the ink lasts for longer than any other pen on the market. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm putting you on the spot here a bit, Lloyd. Yep. I'm putting us both on the spot because I haven't mm -hmm. thought of this example. So... We know that that pen, mm -hmm. the ink lasts last more than any, any other pen. What could we do? What content could we create to creatively prove that we deliver on our We're promise? We're going to get a TikToker that's famous for doodling. Oh, Mr. Doodle. And Have you actually seen him? We're going to get him to doodle with this pen and a competitor until it runs out. Oh. And then see how long he was doodling for. Do you know what? That's a really good idea. Or on a cheaper version, just get someone to scribble for a couple of hours <laughs> until yeah. one of the pens runs out. Um, I thought of something, but then I thought it doesn't really work. 
this is my bad. This is why you're better at ideas than me. Mm. I thought you could put the pen like on a piece of paper and then like walk to like walk 10 miles or something and keep going somewhere. But then just, I thought... Just <laughs> writing on a pavement. <laughs> and that's why you're in your role and I'm in yeah. my role, Dan. Yeah. That's what I Oh, surprisingly, <laughs> the pen didn't write on a pavement. It just broke after a 10 metres. Yeah, we'll stick with you coming up with the ideas. Though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, there, there's an example. Yep. Um, so um, then come up with ideas like that for all the things that you promise um, you say you can do. Uh, and then um, create content that shows that. So like your good idea of scribbling on a bit of paper... For how, like that could be a sped up video a time lapse showing of, two yeah. hands on two bits of, and one the competitor's pen one your pen scribbling and see how much longer the this you know yeah weird example but you know just yeah. thought we'd say that yeah that's all i've got you got anything that's to say oh, <laughs> oh don't say that's all you got you've you've been talking a lot then <laughs> sorry I, I mean I feel bad because I have been interrupting you with useless things, but I'm sorry. No, but that was a lot we actually haven't told the listeners planning. on this episode. Lloyd's been ill, so I did try and prepare two episodes mm. that you didn't need to add a lot to. Sorry. And you haven't added a lot. It was <laughs> weird because I was ill last week, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah. Which is strange. It's not like we record two episodes back to back and no, wear different outfits to pretend no, they're weeks apart, do no, we, Lloyd? No, and I would never forget my T-shirt and then have to find one from our wardrobe department that doesn't really fit me properly to wear, <laughs> so that it's that a different episode not something you do no um but honestly dan i think that was really mm. really useful and i think a lot of yeah. our i think that you know we talked about last week not not the not yeah. a minute ago yeah. last week when we spoke about light bulb moments mm. in content they're like oh that's going to be really helpful i think mm. the whole thing of proving what you, you do rather promises. than just saying those things yeah. is a will be a real light bulb yeah. moment for a lot of people i think so lloyd what are we talking about in next week's episode i i genuinely <laughs> don't know because i don't either we, we haven't prepared that yet no okay, <laughs> okay. i just wanted to see you cool. squirm okay thank you very much <laughs> and on that note we don't know what it is yet but we will see you next week for a mystery business anchors podcast episode see you then see you then